Okay, Assalamualaikum and very good morning. Okay, so today we will continue our lecture. Okay, on the <coughs> EPP three three one manufacturing technology uh, two. Okay, so uh, okay, we start the class. So we are going to the our first chapter. Okay, so chapter twenty five basically. And there will be two parts of the lecture, which is part A and part B. Lah. Okay. So I will explain on the part A first. Okay, so basically this chapter is on the machining center. Okay, as I uh, briefed before in the previous introduction class. Uh, this is also the content of the advanced machining concepts and structure and also the machine economics. Lah. Okay, so this is overview of this of this chapter. Okay, the first uh, thing that you will learn is on the characteristic types and advantage of machine center. Okay, what is the characteristic and types and also what is the good thing of the machining centers to understand the performance of the machining tools. Okay, uh, their modules and components. Uh, okay with the regard of stiffness, vibration, chatter, and damping. So this one, for this, for today class, we just cover the first one, first topic, because it's quite long, basically. And the next lecture, we will cover the next three, okay? And also, the high speed, okay? This is the high performance machine center, okay? The high speed, the high and ultra precision machine operations. And finally, it's on the method of cost analysis, okay? So, uh, for the machining cost minimization, okay. Okay, so the first topic is on the machining centers. Okay, so what basically what is the machining centers? Is the machines basically is operate and perform same type of operations such as turning, drilling, milling, shaping, and etc. Okay, so basically machine center can <coughs> perform it automatically and it can uh, perform various or uh, the same types of operation during during the machine of the products okay so the parts required uh, need further operation for completion uh. so basically what we can see in this figure is uh, the rims okay the tire rims and this is uh, the part of each uh, okay so basically to get to this final product there's uh, some of various and um, multiple operations that require uh, okay various operations that require so specific required requirements such as constant shapes, okay, like the shapes, the features, okay, what is what shape of features in this engine, dimensional tolerance, okay, the accuracy of the final products, dimensions, and also the surface finishing, okay. So the required surface finishing. So basically, like a uh, for engine is an internal part, right? In the, in, in the body, maybe the finishing is not uh, the quality of finishing is not. The main concern lah, but for the rims basically is a exterior part of the car so basically it will be a thing that we have to do a very good surface finishing lah, okay okay so as a these two part you can see that there are various of process that involve such as turning facing milling drilling boring rimming and threading lah. so this is all the process that need to conduct and operation that to get this final, this final products. Okay. Okay. So the next one is on the concept of machining centers. Okay. So basically, in previous years, uh, before the late uh, 1950, uh, basically we use a transition method. Uh, there we have various of machines, and now it's come to a machining center where it's automated method. We just have a one machine to do a several operations, okay? And this basically increase the productivity, lah, okay, of the company or to, to produce the product itself. Okay, so there is a one term that we call it transfer line for the transition methods, where it consists of several specific machine tools arranged in a logical sequence, lah, okay? There are machine tool that. Uh, Arrange to logical sequence so that each of operation to it can continue so by calling the transfer lines. Uh, but basically, it's not so feasible or economical for the product that change rapidly due to sub factors uh, such as product demand. Okay, which the company produce a product like a handphone, for example, the casing. So each of 
uh, it's a very uh, demand product eh, because like per year it produces a new version of your phone so basically it's not practical to have uh, many type of machines like a traditional one because it uh, have a frequent product demand and change uh, frequent uh, change in shape so if the mold have been done so if it need a, a rapid changing this costs a lot of company okay, it's a, because it's very costly to make a mold for some products so uh, it's also time consuming and costly for the modification uh, that what i have explained before so that's why it's quite a uh, machining centers to have to do this this uh, uh, mold okay so that it can change frequently uh, not, no need to, to to buy a new machine or everything so in late uh, night 1950s so there's a first development of machine center like what we have here is a called the horizontal spindle machine center at on i can show you a video here okay so what is the machine center basically okay it's an advanced computer cnc machine tools okay and it can perform variety of operations and yeah? different surface and orientation okay it basically perform in five axis x y and z and also the rotational in x and y direction lah. So that's why you have a five axis and difference operation. So without removing the work space, yeah? okay. So what is the comparison between traditional and the machine centers? So it's a work piece. We bring the work piece to the machine and machine center. We bring the machine operation to the work piece. So maybe I can show you some relationship, okay. So so basically in the previous year, okay, we have some such kind of traditional so we have a transfer line for example okay we have a machine a machine b machine c machine d so for each operation they need to move from machine a to machine b b to c and c to d okay so uh it's costly yeah, basically for the uh, product that change rapidly and need to do to move to the machine okay so that's why we move the work piece let's say we have a work piece here we move to each of the machine lah. so for the machining center we only have one machine okay that can perform all the a b c d operations lah, okay so we have a work piece so we just need to bring the operate operation machine operation to the work piece okay so that's the, the, the big difference between the traditionals here okay and also the machine centers huh? okay okay so <coughs> let's continue here uh, we can I show you the video first but I need to off the the sound maybe maybe you can you can follow the link after this to watch it by yourself because uh, it's quite noisy before this will turn on the sound okay so basically this is a call it a transvision uh ds100 ram horizontal machine center it produce the machining process in the horizontal uh, vertical okay so this is the tools changer okay where it has can install many type of tools here okay and it can transfer the the cutting tools to the uh, machine operation okay so this is our workpiece the thing that we want to machine okay you bring inside the machine okay and then the it's produced the, the cutting process okay so this is the spindle where it mounted the cutting tools and it's produced the, the machining process okay okay now they are uh, change start changing the tools okay the cutting tools and they start to bring another work piece to the machine okay to produce the next operations ok 
experience they started to change the tools based on the we call it automatic tool changer I'll explain you a little bit after this Now we are bring a new piece, okay? So yes, we'll continue to do the cutting process, okay? Which is specific requirement of cutting speeds and the feed rate, and also the axial cutting. There's a three, three important uh, parameters when you are doing the machining process, okay? Which is the speed, uh, the feed rate, and also the deep uh, cut. Dimensions. Okay, so I think that's all for this uh, example. So you can later you can to wish it, wash it. Okay. Okay. The next thing is a uh, go details on the components of the machine centers. Okay. Uh, so basically the workpiece. Okay, as shown in this figure, the workpiece can be placed on the pallet here. Okay. And it move or in, in a various direction. Okay, so this this uh, operating can be done in five axes X, Y, and Z, and also two types of rot rotationing. Okay, and after finishing all the operation, the pallets will automatically move away. Okay, it will move away from the machines and reach the parts, and another pallet will take the position, which another workpiece. Uh, what we have done in the video just now and this is called the automatic pallet changer so the the you think the 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 rail okay that, that move that's the automatic pallet changer lah, okay so this is the principle of uh call it uh five axis machine center lah, okay you can see this can produce very complex shape because of the movement of the machine itself in the five axis direction okay that's why we can make a various of operating in just one machine okay so the next one is on the components also the components still components of machine centers okay so the all the operation are basically computer control okay what we have here in this panel of the cnc okay this is the control panel so we can set the first step until the final step of the products and we can setting codes it everything in here okay that's why it's a computer control so basically the pallet changing and um, changing time is just within 10 to 30 seconds okay it's not time consuming so uh, basically, uh, and also the machine center equip which are programmable automatic tool changer lah, the one we have done before or see before is uh, can install up to 100 cutting tools okay so in the, the rail okay uh, like the bicycle uh, chains one so you can install all the 100 tools there and, and the the operation will automatically pick up the tools that require for the operations okay so the tools are automatically selected based on the shortest route of the machine sp spindle lah, okay so this is uh, one term that's called work envelope which is the ma maximum dimension that cutting tools okay the cutting tools we have here uh, to reach around the workpiece uh, okay so this is the workpiece okay so the cut the spindle have the cutting tools so what is the maximum dimension that it can reach around the workpiece so this is called the work envelope okay so basically it's you know, most used in the industrial robots okay so we have uh, two types of uh, machines here okay one is just only one machines which uh, uh, okay the schem schematic shows the top view of the horizontal spindle machine center showing the pallets to set up station for the pallets uh, okay uh, set up to, uh, station and then the pallet carrier and also the active pallet in operations uh, okay this is the active pallet in operations so for a is a schematic of two uh, this is the A and B is made of two machine center which are common pallet tools. Okay, so various other pallets okay, arrangement are possible lah. Okay, for the system. Okay, it's a more uh, flexible and uh, eff effective because it has two machine center uh, that can perform more uh, workpiece and pallets. Okay, compared to this just one. Okay. So there's another thing, important component in machine center, what we call it a tool exchange arm. Okay, 
basically uh, this is the picture okay to exchange arm okay it's a common design it can swing okay pick up the particle tool and place in the spindle lah. and it has on own tool holder okay so that's make the transfer tools efficient uh, efficient lah. okay you can see that this is the where the tools the tools uh, types okay, let's say we have 100 tools type here okay this is the operation condition lah, where is do the operation this is spindle and this is the tool after you pick up the tools here okay you can do the perform the operation here after that if you can back to the is home basically and uh, change the tool and it come back to this position to perform the operation okay so the tools here all the tools here can be defined can be selected based on the barcodes qr codes or code stacks so the machine center also uh, equipped with a tool checking and part checking station lah, what we have here uh, so, so uh, this is a part checking station lah, okay for the machine center and then info this is to give the info for the control system to compose the any version of tool setting so there are a lot of tools here so even though it's a barcode there's a two step of verification after it pick up and before it's uh, do the uh, perform the operation it have a tool checking and parts checking station lah. so that is uh, to confirm that it's just the right tools for the operation okay okay the next one is uh, still on the components of machine center we call it a touch probes okay this is to determine the workpiece reference surface lah, for the selection of the tool setting for the part to be machine lah. so let's say this is your workpiece okay so basically to perform the machining accurately it have like a probe to have a datum like such a datum or the or original con, uh, position uh, and to measure the dimension of in x y and z direction to get uh, the distance lah, basically so that uh, after to confirm the distance the distance can be informed to the computer and the operation of the machine from the tools the cutting can perform it accurately lah, okay so there are several surface can be uh, surface can be contact using sensor technology lah, like the a b c d here this is more on the probe to determine the x y and z directions is this is on the uh, end mill okay which is probe uh, to 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 determine in the planner is the determine of the planner position for the surface of the cutter okay for the that the diameter composition and also the two length offset lah in the z direction okay so this is also the call it the non-contact sensor that can be used to measure the rough surface dimension and etc lah so this is a very high end but in this non this is the touch one okay the non-contact this is the contact one and this also the non contact we using the laser so that the laser can directly measure the distance okay and this can be caught by uh, the laser beam itself lah. not no need to to touch it because sometimes when it involve a rot rotational machines it will uh, difficult for you to make a contact sensor okay Okay, so basically in the face-to-face -face class, uh, I will ask the student uh, randomly uh, what is the, the the thing that instantly that they can remember after the lecture lah, such as what is the, the three name the three components that are available in the machine centers. Okay, so basically for this answer, you maybe can think about it, but if you are not sure, you can come back to the previous slides. Okay, what we have a lot of components here, so you can name any of three of the lah. Okay, so just just to refresh the student if uh, before we move to the next chapter. Okay. Okay, so we come to the next uh, sub section in this chapter, which we call it uh, types of machine centers. Okay, so basically they are four types of machining centers okay uh, we should call it a vertical spindle machine center okay and it's a part of to measure the part for the decavity lah such as the mold and the die making so basically when we want to produce a mold or die so we will use a vertical spindle uh, 
machine center lah so this is the the type okay the vertical one because the machine the, the process is the tools is in the vertical vertical direction okay so the thrust force in the vertical direction here okay and then it's a we have a very high stiffness and good dimensional accuracy lah okay for this machine so any product that want to produce a to have a very good dimension accuracy so we basically use this uh, vertical spindle machine centers okay okay the next one is on the horizontal spindle machine center okay it's uh, the same like this but the, the machining the cutting tools is the horizontal lah, okay horizontal uh, this is basically for the large or tall parts required machining in various surface lah. so this uh, any of the big work piece or tall or large uh, and also need a perform in various surface if you use a uh, horizontal uh, spindle horizontal lah. so the figure is not available here but you can search okay, in the internet to find out what is the kind of these machine centers okay the next one is on the turning centers okay it's a horizontal type okay this is the figure it's uh, the same like the horizontal uh, it's CNC control okay all of this um, machine center is CNC control basically have a multi turret uh, TC which is uh, to can be variety of tools for several operation in a rotating workpiece uh, okay. so it's a workpiece will uh, move in, rot in rotating not not the the uh, tool itself but both the turret and spindle and also the the work piece will move in the rot rotating uh, motion okay so the tire allow for the drilling and milling okay without need to refixture to the work piece lah, okay? means that this is the additional basically we have a on the spindle but with addition of this turret is allow for the drilling and milling without need to refixture lah, okay whatever the setting the first setting that we have done here uh, when we want to make a additional uh, process of drilling and milling we no need to uh, resetting it lah can be done by these turrets okay so this is a video here but i think later on maybe you can view it okay uh, we show more uh, detailed information there lah okay so the final one the more comprehensive one we call it a universal machine center lah it have a both horizontal and vertical uh, directions process to perform okay like this one is the only uh, uh, vertical and this is horizontal but the universal one is at both uh, okay have many features and simultaneously machining all the surface of all the pieces of course is very high in price uh, okay okay so this is the the, the quite important uh, section and on how the selection of machine center okay if you want to perform or to machine one of the products okay what is the the important factors that support you to select the machine center okay as we show here there's several machine center that available but from all of this what is the most suitable for you okay that's the important thing lah, okay the factors the first one is type of product lah, what type of product you want the size and the shapes is it small big okay uh, round in shape uh, or rectangular okay type of machining operation to be performed or number of cutting tools so some of the machine center maybe have a limited uh, type of perform operations and also limited cutting tools so that's a, a way thing that you have to know lah okay uh, the third one dimension accuracy how accurate you want to perform some of the machine center maybe can not cannot achieve the, the tolerance or the accuracy so you have to select based on what the available machine is and final one the production bit lah recommend so basically this is in the factory we are they want to produce a product for the for the, like the engine block for example in one day how many engine block that what they want to perform huh, to produce so uh, some machine maybe has a uh, have a more slow rates so it can produce uh, less so it's based on the when the company want to buy the machine center for their products uh, so they have to consider this one lah, okay the target sales okay for example so this is one of the case study that you can see here on how to 
machining a outer bearing waste lah. Okay, using the turning center, the process or the step. Okay, the basically all the material will come as a hot roll uh, steel tube uh, in the tube cylinder, and like this uh, Okay, and basically for this case study for the outer race, outer bearing race is uh, need to ninety five meter per minute uh, the cutting speed for all the operation uh, using the carbide cutting tools. Okay. So the first process, of course, you have need to do the outer surface first, basically. Okay, finishing turning the outer diameter, and then you get to the next process of boring and groving of the outer diameter. Then later you move to the internal parts, okay, which the internal groving and radius of form tools, okay, and finish the boring here, which the internal groove and rough boring of the internal diameter. And finally, you go to the internal grooving with a uh, form tools and chamfering lah. Okay, so you need to chamfering for the safety of the file and everything. And finally, to cut it and uh, finish off uh, in the kind of final product. So basically, this is all the six step here. It's all available in one machine center only. You don't need to for like the traditional one. From the process, you need to move another machine center uh, machine and we require basically six machine to do okay but for the advanced machine center we have here we can perform all in just one machine center and uh, it's a cost effective uh, and time consuming so okay okay so uh, the next one is on the how you can reconfigure your machines and the system uh, okay basically this is just like a base setup for your cutting tools when you want to do a mini of process and you want to cut a different angle, a different surface of the products. So you basically, to move from one process to another process, you need to reconfigure lah. Okay. So even though it's a work just in you know, one machine center, but of course, sometimes you need to reconf reconfigure lah. Uh, un unless you have a very high... Uh, specification and high performance of machine center that can do that for you lah. so this is basically one concept or basic thing that you have to know so lah, okay so the machine components can be arranged or rearranged quickly into a number of complications to meet the product demands lah. okay you can see the a b c uh, this, this uh, three different type of reconfigurations okay when you want to do a cutting tools here okay you can see that it changed the, the, the setup lah, okay uh, based on the the specific uh, operations, okay. So we can see uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, tools in this configuration machines, okay. Such as magazine unit, functional unit, okay. The bed unit, base unit, arm unit, okay. Everything can be reconfigured to match what is your cutting operation at the time. So what is the effect of this uh, uh, reconfiguration? Machines, the first is improve the product productivity lah. Okay, means that you no need to change. Um, uh, you just reconfigure it, and you no need to change the machine. Okay, uh, reduce the time of course. Okay, and cost effective lah. Okay, by everything in one machine center, uh, it can produce all this benefit. Improve productivities. Uh, reduce lead time so that you can produce more uh, products in one day and also it's cost effective because it's just need one machine and you need to two or three machine to uh, uh, to do the operation eh? okay. okay so this is uh, I think the last part of this uh, section uh, this lecture is on the machine to structure lah okay so and when you want to uh, you have to know lah your machine to structure what is the specification okay so basically the tools of the machine is consist of this uh, various material lah, such as the uh, grass cast iron okay welded steel ceramic composite granite and also polymer concrete lah to construct the tools of the machines so this uh, uh, three uh, things for the you need to know for the design consideration factors the first thing is on the tools designs material and construction uh, 
Okay, this is the parameters that you have to know. The first is the stiffness, of course. Stiffness, the higher the K, the mean that's the, the K value, the stiffness value, the more stiff is uh, the machine. Lah. So this is uh, to produce a dimension accuracy expansion of the elastic modulus of the material and also the geometry of the structure. Okay, let's say you want to produce one one specific dimension of the structure which uh, geometry lah, uh, specific geometry. So how accuracy it can be done? So the cutting tools must have a very high stiffness. If it's not the at the required stiffness, maybe during the operation it can be break lah, the, the, the cutting tool itself. Okay, because uh, of the uh, your workpiece and also the cutting must have a different in terms of stiffness so that it can cutting very well and has produced a very accurate uh, dimension of your product. So, the, the second thing is on the damping. This is to reduce or eliminate the variation in charter in operation which involve type of material and joint in tool. So basically when you have one machine center you must consider a uh, damping because uh, sometimes you have another operation machine in, in the big factory you have many type of machine so when you mount it in, on the base of the floor so when the person uh, beside uh, to you do the another operation in another machine so either the variation from the machine can transfer to your machine so that's why you must consider some of damping elements to the machine center so that you can control the vibration when the vibration come from the machine your machine itself is okay but when it uh, of some mission from the another machine it can produce a, a less accuracy dimension of your products okay and finally is on the assembly technique how you assemble reconfigure the machines okay using the resin or etc the gateway to, to control uh, the uh, machining process and linear motor and the foundation, uh, the, the vibration that what I have explained just now. Okay. So another thing is thermal distortion. The lack of precision contribute from the internal bearing, spindle, and external nearby machine and cutting fluid. Uh, for example, you want to do a cutting. Sometimes because of the thermal effect, you need to have a cutting fluid so that it's not affect the, the the dimension of the, the also the cutting process of the. the uh, your products lah, okay and also internal itself the, the from the cutting to itself the spindle is all, all of the thermal effect when it's do the the, the process lah. sometimes the, the the machine center is intelligent enough to have a cooling system so that is called you can control the humidity and the the, uh, the temperature inside the, the machine okay and finally uh, of course the area composite compensation uh, okay this is the main thing that you need to consider so that is the product can produce a very high accuracy without any of error okay so this is the two things of how the machines construct uh, tools this is uh, just on the to explain the stiffness of holding material here uh, this is basically what uh, it's a position of aircraft cockpit simulator lah. So the cockpit simulator can be considered as a workpiece lah. It's not not a machine process, but it's a on the movement and control the the the, the products okay, or the structure. So it's use this uh, very high stiffness of the uh, holder. Okay. So the this is the process of the cutting. How you want to cutting the the workpiece here? Okay, and it's involved a head support leg. Eh? It's not just a three or triple. It's a head support so that uh, it can load easily and thus the bending and lateral deflection are minimal. Okay, because there's six uh, head support legs, and it can control the bending moments and also the lateral one. So that is when it produce a cutting speed in the axial direction, it can produce a very accuracy without the any vibration effects. Okay. And of course it can be portable and can be accessible. Lah. Okay. So that's the, the some of the examples that to know. Okay. And to end of this lecture, maybe you can find out three benefit of reconfiguration machine centers that has been explained before lah, in the previous slide. So 
when you just know one result you can get the effect in the order effect okay because it's just a one machine center so you can uh, thinking of in terms of cost okay uh, lead time and also the productivity lah that's the, the the main three effects okay okay i think that's all for today uh, move to the next lecture after this on the machine center part b okay thank you very much